Hi everybody, today and in this video we're going to talk about quantitative easing, which is sometimes called QE for short. And you may well have heard about this in the news and wondered what this is. In very simple terms, this is where there's an increase in the money supply. And it's where the central bank does this. So it's done by the central bank in a country and they increase the money supply and this is a form of expansionary monetary policy and in the UK the central bank here is the Bank of England and in the UK the Bank of England is actually independent of the government but in some countries in the world the central bank is controlled by the government it's not independent of them so the way that the quantitative easing works how do they get more money into the system so what happens is that the bank of england which is our central bank it buys assets from banks and from pension funds and when I say assets, by this I mean generally bonds. You don't need to know really more about this, but they're buying bonds from these financial institutions, so banks or pension funds. And when they buy the bonds from the banks or pension funds, they have to pay for them. So money, which has been newly created by the Bank of England is paid into the banks and the pension funds. So money goes into them. And then the idea, if it works, is that these will then lend money. They'll make more loans to individuals and to businesses. And in this way, more money will enter the system. Also, for the pension funds, because they now have more money, they're more likely to buy shares. And in general terms, if the quantitative easing works, the money flows from the Bank of England into the economy. So they've increased the money supply in the economy by buying these assets from the banks and the pension funds. This is particularly helpful, for example, if the rate of interest is already very low because we know that one form of expansionary monetary policy is to put down interest rates but for example in the financial crisis which started in 2008 in the world so it was from 2008 onwards the rate of interest in the UK went all the way down to 0.5% and therefore, the Bank of England couldn't lower the rate of interest very much further. So they wanted to use expansionary monetary policy to try and increase aggregate demand within the UK economy. But they couldn't put the interest rates down very much. So an alternative, and really this is a sort of emergency measure very often, where you can't really use interest rates. Instead, you can increase the money supply in this way. It also has another effect of decreasing the rate of interest in the economy. You can think about this because if you're looking at the value of the pound, if you're looking at the price of the pound, you can look at the price of the pound in terms of another currency like the euro, but you can also look at the price of money as in the rate of interest, the price of borrowing money or how much money you're paid for saving your money. So the rate of interest is a bit like the price of the money. And if we put quantity here, so if we've got the demand for pounds and we have the supply of pounds as well, if we have quantitative easing, we know that this is going to cause an increase in the supply of money. So the supply will increase to the right to S1. And when we're at S1, you can see that the interest rate now, the price of the pound, the price of the money, has actually fallen. So it's fallen from P to P1. 
So really it's as if the rate of interest, because that's the price here, has fallen from P to P1. So it's like the rate of interest falling from here to here. And this combined with this should boost the aggregate demand in the economy. You might just want to have a think about what happens. So what will happen here is that if there's more lending to consumers, consumption should go up. If there's more lending to businesses, investment should go up. And we know that consumption and investments are both components of aggregate demand. And if aggregate demand goes up, then we've got expansionary monetary policy. The final things to think about, though, is will the banks lend? Will they be comfortable enough, for instance, in a recession and like in the financial crisis, to actually lend more to individuals and lend more to firms? Or will they be worried that they won't receive all of their money back and therefore they won't make very many loans. Also, might the banks and the pension funds hold onto the money? So they've received more money through the quantitative easing, but might they just hold on to that money instead of lending it out to individuals and to firms? Because they might be worried that they've made a lot of losses, they've had a lot of loans that haven't been repaid, and therefore they just hold on to the money. So you need to consider that as well. But that, in summary, is quantitative easing.